Hello and welcome to the Car Kernel channel and welcome to the 2023 Toyota Sienna. Ever since they changed the Sienna to a hybrid, I think they really did a good version of the Sienna. This is the best Sienna yet. However, this Sienna has one fatal issue that might prevent you from buying one or might make you not want to buy one, which we're gonna discuss in this video and a lot more right after this. Let's take a look under the hood of the 2023 Toyota Sienna. And just for reference, this has been exactly the same since 2021. So the Sienna only has one powertrain. You can technically say they are two, but it's actually just one. So they took out the V6, they took out the old four-cylinder. There is no longer a gasoline-only model. It is all hybrid. Some people will take that as that's a bad thing. That's actually a great thing for something like this. Nobody will buy a minivan and want a very fast car. They never were intended for that. But people will buy them because they want to haul their families around for good gas mileage. So what we have here is a four-cylinder engine, the A25A FXS. It's a 2.5 liter four-cylinder. It's been out since 2018 and other models. So far, there hasn't been major issues. There are a couple things. We'll talk about them later in the video. But this engine has a lot of great technology. It has some things that are question mark. It has some things that are could have been done less complicated, but overall, it is a decent engine. Some of the highlights of this engine, it has a very clever VBTI E system, which uses an electric motor that advances and retards the timing. Pretty cool setup. Very complicated on paper, but in reality, it's actually pretty simple how it works. And to me, it is better than the oil-controlled ones. Now, this engine also has Toyota's D4S system, which so far, it's been out for a few years now. There hasn't been issues with carbon buildup because you have both port and direct injection. And I actually have a video showing you how that looks like after 80,000 miles or so. I'll leave that right here. This is a fourth generation hybrid system really smooth. You cannot really see the transition, feel the transitions between electric drive or hybrid or both. It's very, very smooth. Does have two cooling systems. One of them is for the engine, standard stuff, does have an electric water pump. One of them is for the inverter, cools the inverter, the battery is air cooled. The transmission in this is eCVT, not to be mistaken with a normal CVT. Basically the operating principles of it is of a CVT, continuously variable rate transmission. However, it is not a conventional CVT. And this is basically the exact same design since Toyota Hybris first came out back in the first generation Prius. This is a P810 transmission. You're gonna find this in a lot of other models like the Highlander Hybrid, like the RAV4 Prime. It is basically bulletproof. If you take care of it, just simple maintenance. Don't tow a lot with it, don't exceed towing. And actually, small recommendation. Don't tow near the limit in these if you want them to remain reliable. As the truth have to be said, these are not meant for towing. But otherwise, this hybrid system, to me, is one of the better versions that they've ever come out with. And you will see this exact same hybrid system in so many other Toyota and Lexus models. It is super common, very basic, looks very complicated, but actually is not considering how the automotive industry have gotten too complicated. Now, the hybrid battery in this car sits underneath the front seats. I think that is a better location for it than, for example, the Sequoia, where it sits behind the rear seats. This keeps your back floor low, but the only disadvantage is it raises the front floor up. So the seats, the front seats feel a little elevated. We'll talk about them a little bit when we talk about the inside, but that is the only thing. It is air-cooled. It does have two vents with filters now, with proper filters. Do keep them clean. Do make sure they stay unobstructed and not blocked. And you shouldn't have issues with this battery for a long time. Let's take a look underneath the 2023 Toyota Sienna. And the first thing you notice, everything is completely covered up. That is the thing with new cars. And this is what keeps them relatively quiet. Although the Sienna is not the quietest in the world, but this does help. Service is very simple, just like any other modern Toyota. A few bolts, you take this, oil change is very simple. If you do need to drain coolant and transmission, these two covers have to come off, unfortunately. They do not really make easier access to them. 
not the end of the world. These are covers, just a few bolts, a few clips, and they come right out. Now, we look at the front suspension here. We have dual piston caliper. Pretty interesting to see that because hybrids normally do not need strong brakes. They use regenerative braking, which really helps. But we still have the dual piston caliper, which is cool. We do have an aluminum knuckle. That is something that they're doing to save weight. We do have Toyota's familiar design with the control arm separate from the ball joint. I don't think they'll ever change that, and I think they shouldn't. McPherson struts in the front. Things are very, very familiar. If you've had a previous generation Sienna or you've seen other Toyotas, this is a very familiar design. But what is not familiar design is the exhaust situation. So here's what the exhaust does. It comes up from the top. There's another catalytic converter up top. This is a secondary cleanup cat, pretty exposed, not the end of the world. Then the exhaust comes very, very close to the edge. And we have this little contraption over here. So what this does is it uses the heat from the exhaust to warm up the coolant so the car would warm up quicker. We've had this since the third generation Prius. It does work. Third generation Prius did have some issues with it leaking and whatnot, but the newer ones, we do not have issues. So this is what that is. But then the exhaust takes a very wild turn. It turns back in to this one-sided muffler. And the reason they did that is to keep the floor low. They did not want to make this just straight. And they put this giant muffler that is one-sided. So the pipe comes in and then goes out at the same side. Pretty interesting design how they did that, but it works. Car is pretty quiet, of course. And then it comes back out. We have another resonator here, and then it goes out to the tailpipe. Interesting design. The reason they did that is the hybrid battery sits here. And if you turn around, if we turn around and look in this area, you can actually physically see that the floor is lower here. So if you put this muffler here, this will be hung down very low. This kind of lower floor is where the battery is. So you have the battery here, and then on the other side, you have the fuel tank right here. So the only place to put the exhaust and put this big muffler is right here. So this is your one-sided muffler. So air comes in, gets muffled, turns around, and then comes back out. Pretty interesting design. You don't really see designs like that. And I like it. They, they made it work, and it works pretty good. As we move our way to the back, we have Toyota's typical suspension these days. They call it a wishbo double wishbone. I don't see the double wishbone, but it is basically a multi-link suspension, pretty simple suspension. This is an all-wheel drive model. We're gonna talk about that in a few. Does have the electronic parking brake. I love those, they work really good. Makes service very, very simple. Now, we talk about the all-wheel drive system. You do have MGR, which is the motor generator rear, very familiar with hybrids. You do not have a drive shaft, no transfer case, none of that stuff. It's very simple. But there is one thing that is interesting. If you look here at the connector of this MGR, it looks very, very similar to those of the RAV4 and the Venza that have the water intrusion, but so far it's been quiet. Because when I put my hand behind this, it's actually completely closed, unlike the ones with the RAV4 where they're open to let the water out. So far there hasn't been issues, but at least in my eyes, it looks very similar to that of the RAV4. As we make our way all the way back here, you notice the floor kind of comes down this is where that third row seat will hide. We'll take a look at that and how that works in a bit. But you notice the floor is very low to the ground here, almost at the same level as the subframe, and then we exit. Very interesting design. It's actually pretty different than previous Sienna's. You know, the previous generation Sienna had a beam rear suspension, very simple, very ancient. This does not. This has independent rear suspension. Pretty cool to see it. One small note, the shocks here are Hitachi USA. Now something about these shocks, if we go kind of jump into the Lexus side, the RX350 used to have Hitachi shocks and they were notorious for leaks. So far, there hasn't been any issues with the Sienna that I know of with rear shocks leaking, but that's just a small observation. They're very simple to replace, you know, three bolts here, two at the top, 
the whole thing comes out that's part of the TNGA platform very simple but overall there's a pretty interesting design and that one-sided muffler is pretty cool let's take a look at the outside of the Toyota Sienna and something have to be said my wife likes to say that cars are mimicking animals lately and they do to a point this one reminds me and her of a beluga whale that's the best way to describe the sienna it is a very interesting shape and this car has a nose this one right here you notice it just everything kind of comes in comes down and then goes in then comes back out almost like it has a nose pretty interesting again it is a minivan minivans historically have not been handsome looking things this one included you have a massive grill that toyota has been really trying to emphasize lately but that's what they're going with lately radar sensor right behind the emblem you have shutters behind the grill so when the car is cold it'll actually close the shutters so you can warm up faster in cold weather and then they'll open and resume normal cooling the headlights are somewhat of a resemblance of toyota's latest design language you can see the same design and like the corolla and some other models interesting headlights look pretty good they work really good they're leds and then as we wrap around the side we come to something that i don't like these wheels now this is a platinum version of this van you know these wheels are nice you look at them from far away they're almost chrome like and whatnot but this is something that toyota has been doing for a while now this is called a clad wheel so this is actually a plastic listen to this this is a plastic cover that sits on top of the aluminum wheel initially when you think about it wait a second this is a plastic cover basically a glorified hubcap that's okay at least it's well made but the problem is when you go service this wheel it is so easy to scratch that clad cover and then you can't get it separate so basically if you curb this on on a curb or you go to replace this tire and this gets crashed that's it you have to buy the entire wheel this absolutely makes no sense and this is basically a glorified hubcap in my opinion but that's what toyota went with so when you hear clad wheels they're not a good thing it's just my opinion as a technician. As we weave our way around, of course, this is the very important touches from Toyota. These little two tiny little fins for aerodynamics. They absolutely do nothing, but some engineer somewhere thought it was a good idea to put that on a giant box, which is what the Sienna is. Now, as we wrap around, something that I like about this, the handles. You know, they're just door handles i actually like the design i like that they made something slightly unique and when you look closer they actually made an indentation in the body just for the handles and this is a clever way for aerodynamics instead of making this some weird tesla style handle whatnot they actually made a cutout where the handle comes in closer but it's still nonetheless a big handle i like it i think it's a pretty small touch but pretty cool one and then something else that they added in this entire generation of Sienna. First thing is the door. You can open the handle, the automatic door will take it. But then if you have a little child that is trying to open this door, usually pulling this handle will hang in it and they can't open it. Now you just have a button. This is actually pretty cool. I, I really like the idea of a button to open and close the door. Makes it more friendly. And of course, equally, we have one more thing about the door. In the higher trims, if you notice right here, you have these three little lines. And in a perfect world, that indicates that you have this feature. Basically, it's the kick sensor for the sliding door. Great feature. However, Toyota, in their infinite wisdom, decided even the models that do not have the kick sensor will have these three lines. I don't know why they did that, but they did. And then you can just do this and the door opens this is what the scenario i'm thinking of and people will say oh this is gimmicky and whatnot here's a real life scenario where this is really useful you're a parent you'll come into the car you have a little little kids like babies 
You're carrying your baby in one arm and the diaper bag in the other. You came to the door, how are you going to open it? Well, you just do this, do the little dance, and the door opens. Useful feature, not the end of the world if you don't have it, but it is nonetheless a useful feature that is available, which is nice. Now, as we make our way back, there's something extremely interesting here. I guess this new world order of car manufacturers trying to make a minivan even look sporty and cool. It is pretty cool, I, I have to agree. This deal here, if you look at it from this angle, this Sienna has a muscular look in the back. You have this giant dip and you just, there's a lot going on, making way for the massive taillight that of all cars, if you look at this taillight, of all cars in the world, this resembles the Supra, the BMW Supra. And I'll put a picture and I want you to kind of look at this from far away, this angle right here. And then I'll put a picture of the back of a Supra. They're exactly the same. This is very interesting to see because you can tell they're the same company. Now, something about this back door that I dislike. This is something not just Toyota, everybody's going this way. In order to make this as big as possible on the inside, they're making the bumpers smaller and smaller. And in this one, it's non-existent. If you look here, any little tap, and you're gonna damage the back door. And imagine if you live in the city of Chicago where people use other people's car as bump stops when they're parallel parking. This will get damaged so fast and there is nothing. Usually you just, you know, you have the license plate marks all over your bumper and that's how it is. But in here, you're gonna damage the back door. Next thing you know, your back door doesn't wanna open anymore because it's all bent. That's not cool. Now, speaking of the back door, it is of course power operated. It does have the dual motor design. Everybody's going with that. We have no choice. When these break down, hopefully they don't, but when they do, you can't open the door anymore. It becomes very hard and you have to literally fight it to do that. Now, so also here is the third brake light, which I don't like. And here is why. When you look through the rear view mirror to the back, this literally blocks your view. This window is not very big. And this is, again, they're trying to maximize the space in this van. They made the window way too small. And then you have the third brake light just sticking out at the top. They could have done a little better here for visibility, but again, not the end of the world. But what is somewhat the end of the world, at least for me and to a group of people, this van does not come standard with a spare tire. The spare tire is an option, a $75 option. I don't understand why that is the case, but hey, at least it's still available as an option. An option that is extremely interesting, because if you look right here, normally, if you get the one without this very special option, this would be just a storage pocket. But in here, if you pull this panel, which is very flimsy, by the way, you have a spare tire. Very interesting location for it. And I think it's a better one than the previous one. So the previous Sierra used to have the spare tire underneath it. I told you this is super flimsy. That's where they did it. The previous Sienna had the spare tire underneath it. Very cumbersome, very hard to get to. Usually they rust out in the rust belt area. This is a much better place. But I don't understand why is it not a permanent option? That's just the way Toyota did it. Now, business as usual, once we put this flimsy, flimsy door back. There we go, which the gap is horrendous, but it's very flimsy. This is business as usual with the Sienna. Pull this, seat disappears, pull this, third row seat disappears, and now you have all the space. But there's one small annoyance here. You have the seats down, you go for a drive, you hit the first bump, here's what the third row seat does. It just comes up like this, same thing here. And they don't want to come down. You have to keep, push them down and they still want to come up. I don't know why they couldn't do something better about this, but this is a small observation. Now, the second row seat does not come out of the car. They, they are permanently bolted down. Yes, you can completely remove them, 
but then you would disable the airbag and we have all kinds of problems. So let me demonstrate so you can see it. How big is the space here with the seats like Toyota wanted them or intended them? You fold this down and you fold this one as well. Now, we have to say that that is a pretty large space. However, they're still in your way. And this is where they could have done something different. They didn't. It's not the end of the world. But you, they could have done better with this. I just wanted you to see it in case you're going from an older Sienna. You cannot remove the second row seat. You can push them all the way forward. But that's as much space as you get. Unfortunately, I wish they would have done that different, but they didn't. And then one last thing we're going to talk about here, which is very, very interesting. So this model has the trailer hitch, which is fine, pretty cool. This is actually an OEM trailer hitch. But then Toyota decided to do something very, very interesting with the wiring. So because there's no space for the wiring to come here and attach right next to the hitch so you can plug in your lights for your trailer, and you can't really do it underneath because this is a pretty low hitch. They decided to put this little contraption right here. And the wire runs through it and goes here. So this looks very odd because you have this thing sticking out. And there's nothing on the other side. They could have done this a little better. And it looks like a complete and absolute afterthought. But that is Toyota's way of doing this. So it will actually work, but it just looks very odd. Let's talk about the interior of the 2023 Toyota Sienna. Now this interior is really well thought out from a functional standpoint. Materials could be better, especially as prices go up. Materials could be better, fit and finish could be better. But overall, the layout of this interior is really good. Some highlights that I love. Now you have all this like open feel. You have this flying center console and you have a storage compartment underneath it. I love that. I think that is really a good use of space. Then you have this open shelf that I can just see families really utilizing that. They really thought of this well. Center stack is, is flat where you can still put stuff here even though, you know, this is just the, the top of the center console. It is really thought out well. I like that Everything is also still physical control. Your HVAC controls, they're all physical buttons. Screen is a little far away, especially if you, you're taller and you're gonna sit further back. The screen can be a little far. And the other thing is, this is not updated yet. Potentially, next year they will come up with an update where this would be the first thing to go. But this is an old infotainment system. It works okay but it's featureless and it can be slow and glitchy sometimes. Now the new system they're gonna replace it with eventually is also glitchy, but at least it's more featureful and it does work a little better. This is a fully decked out platinum version of this van and the screen can be a little bigger. Not the end of the world, but the gauges are not some silly screen that does nothing but add more to the price. It does have a decently sized screen that does have a few functions, nothing over the top. But again, in, the, in a van like this, you don't want too much as well. Shifter is a physical shifter, even though it's a hybrid, it's still a physical shifter, still have a cable, and that is very nice and works very well. Now, something about the front of this van, the seats sit very high, naturally. That is a good thing if you're short, like me. You know, I always raise my seat all the way up. And this, I don't have to raise it all the way up because they're already raised to begin with. But if you're tall, this is going to be an issue. And the reason for that is they decided to put the high voltage battery right underneath the front seat. I think it is a great location because it's you can still sit here if you're tall, but exiting out of it, you might hit the pillar and whatnot. But you, once you're seated, it is comfortable. But if they put the battery in the back, they would have to raise the back floor and that would intrude on your second row space and the third row space, which they did not do that. And that is a good thing. Seats are super comfortable. Everything here is easy to operate and just really family focused. Taking a road trip in this car will be fun because it is well thought out. And of course, we cannot talk about the Sienna interior without talking about the back seats. And starting with 
the sliding doors. Yes, folks, the Sienna, of course, have sliding doors. They are power. One thing I have to say about the sliding doors. With Siennas, it's always been a problem as they get older. The cables break and all the problems start. So starting the previous generation, Toyota actually improved the cable serviceability, where the cable is not expensive. Basically, the cable on the sliding doors is a serviceable item separately from the motor. Not expensive. And they continued that theme with this one. If the cable breaks, you don't have to mortgage your house to fix the doors. You can actually buy the cables inexpensively and they're relatively simple to replace. And that is a huge update. Now, the second row seat. If you go with the higher trims like this one, you get a fancy little screen, which is very nice. But the days of DVDs are over. So what exactly does this big screen does? Well, if you look in the middle, you have two things that are major if you have a screen like this. You have an HDMI port and right next to it you have a power outlet. So what I see happening here is my kids on a long trip connecting their Nintendo Switch or PlayStation 4 or whatever the case may be and powering it right next to it, putting it right in here. It will be covered in fries and Cheerios but they can play the video game and not bug us on our 12-hour trip. This is really a good idea, folks. If you're going to put a screen in 2023, it needs to have those two things and better yet, right next to each other. That is really a good idea. Now, the space here, I am 5'7". I mean, this is my driving position. I have plenty of room and this is what the Sienna really shines. Not the Highlander, not the Grand Highlander that's coming up, not even the Sequoia has this much room inside because this is the ultimate family van. Now this second row seat cannot be removed completely from the van and so many people have voiced so many issues about it and look I understand and I agree they could have done this better however they had to put an airbag in the seat so basically if you were going to buy your minivan as a cargo van this might be an issue otherwise you can actually fold the seat, the bottom folds up and the seat pushes all the way forward to give you maximum space when you fold the third row seat and you will have a lot of space. Speaking of that third row seat, let's go check that out. Third row seat, a proper one at that. Now for filming purposes, we push this one forward, but I'm 5'7". This is my seating position in the second row seat and in front of it is my normal driving position. This is a lot of room, folks. There is one thing I have to say about the third row. It's how low the seat is. Like I'm sitting here and my legs are bowed up and down. That is about the only thing that is an issue. Now, I don't think you're going to have a lot of cars that have the third row seat that is exactly the same as the front seat comfort wise. This is just the way they are. But as far as leg room, I'm perfectly fine here. And if you're not an oldster like me, you're a youngster and you sit here, you're a young adult, this is perfectly fine. You can even stretch your legs a little bit and you're perfectly fine. Now, if you're older and you sit here for a long time, this position might be an issue, but otherwise it is super comfortable. But the best part is there's even more stuff in the third row seat. First, my personal favorite, there's a little window shade right here. It is manual, you can hang it here just so the sun wouldn't bother you from this tiny little window right here. That is super cool. Right here and equally on the other side, you actually have a headphone jack and a volume. So whatever video game we're playing on that big screen, we can hook it up here, listen, we don't have to drive our parents crazy and life is wonderful. Told you this van is really thought out even in the third row seat. And over here you have some more USB charging points this is the perfect family van, in my opinion. And they really thought this one well, and you can see it even in the third row seat. Let's talk about some common problems with this entire generation of Sienna, not just the 23. So something have to be said. When a car is launched, in the technician world, or kind of the internal leadership world, they will call certain launches successful and certain other ones unsuccessful. The Sienna was more towards the successful. There were some issues in the first year, 2021, for example. 
there was a few issues and there was some kind of activity and movement to improve things, but 2022 and up have been complete silence. And that is what we want to hear. So 2021, let me give you a few examples of those few activities. First one is depleted battery. And unfortunately that problem went into 2022. That is not depleted high voltage battery, 12 volt battery. And then the other issue is rattles and squeaks and wind noise and this and that. That is very typical with any new model. But more on the serious side, there was issues with the hybrid computer causing all kinds of codes and to a point shutting the car off or putting it in, in a way, limp mode. And the problem at that time was they were on back order. So car sat and sat and sat and waited and there was some issues with engine computers. There were some computer problems going on. That was in 2021, the early ones. The only real issue that remains up to 2023 and really has nothing to do with the Sienna has to do with the four cylinder engine. This four cylinder engine is a little bit on the high tech side. So when you get an engine this high tech, every little thing matters. Something with this engine, and this applies even if you have this engine in another model, RAV4, Camry, whatever the case may be. If you drive this engine very short periods and worse with a hybrid where you're potentially gonna move it in EV mode and as soon as the engine comes off, you let it shut off and, move, and shut it off. In cold weather, it's actually gonna build up so much condensation inside. Next thing you know, the oil looks milky. You, people have come thinking their head gasket has blown mixed coolant and oil. But condensation is actually water. It's gonna mix with that oil and we have major problems. Folks, if you own one of these cars, you're planning to buy one, you already own one, or you own this engine in another model, plan on always driving them longer periods. Don't just start the engine, move it a little bit, shut it off repeatedly, especially in cold weather, because they are known to do that. And if you must do that, say you have no choice, you have to move this car here and there, Check your oil. The minute you see it changing color into something whitish, like it's mixing with water, immediately change the oil. And remember, you got to change the oil every six months, regardless on these engines, because they are a little sensitive to condensation buildup. And if you all of a sudden pull the dipstick, the oil level is way too high and it looks milky, that's what happened. Be careful with that because this problem remains. Otherwise, things have been extremely quiet for the Sienna, and that is a very good thing. This hyper system doesn't really have a lot of common issues, regular maintenance, fluids, whatnot. Keep the vents of the hyper battery clear, clear the filter if it even gets dirty. It depends on your use, if you live in a dusty area, whatever the case may be. But otherwise, there is not a lot of data indicating kind of chronic issues. And some people will say this is too new for that. Folks, ask me about a 2016 Tacoma in year one. I can write a two hour video talking about their common problems because they were that bad. This, however, this is a medium successful launch. Basically, there was issues in the first year, second year, third year. Things are quiet. They fixed them, life is good. One thing remains though, and that is unfortunate. The fit and finish is not perfect. And when I say not perfect, I mean it's really not good. The interior feels plasticky, there was gaps, mismatched, and this is something unfortunately developing with Toyota lately. You don't buy this because it's a luxury car. 50 years from now, it'll still be the same, it'll still function the same, but it's just, when you pay these high prices and you look at the gaps not consistent, things are off a little bit here and there, it just, it doesn't feel good, and I'm with you on that. Let's talk about some things I do not like about the Toyota Sienna. And there's only really a couple things, maybe three things, but one of them is a fatal thing that might actually shy away a lot of folks from buying one. So the first thing is the price is high. And I understand it's a hybrid, it's all that, and that's fine. But the problem is the fit and finish and the feel of everything inside. It does feel too plasticky. And that's been something with the Sienna for a while. But in this one, the price is being higher. They could be a little nicer in the inside. The second thing I don't like about it is the second row seat being non-removable. Look, I understand it's not the end of the world. You can fold it forward and push it all the way forward and that's fine. But they could have done something better there. I understand there's an airbag in the seat and all that. They could have done something better there. But the fatal thing about the Sienna, look, this is a great minivan. I think this is the best Sienna ever. But the problem is, can you even get one? 
The wait times are ridiculous to get one of these. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing as much as eight to 10 months to get one. And that's causing dealerships to wreak havoc on customers, raising, marking up the prices. Used ones are extremely expensive. In some cases, used ones are more expensive than new ones because they're available right now. And then what is Toyota doing? What is the point of making this great minivan and you can't get one? This is, there's no point. Toyota really needs to do something about this and fast because what's the point of having a great minivan when you can't even get one and when you do find one finally, it is $10,000 more than MSRP because dealerships are just having at it with people. That's not right, folks. I hope Toyota fixes that soon. So should you buy a 2023 Toyota Sienna? Folks, I think this is a super competent minivan. I mean, this is such a massive improvement over the previous one, which was already very good. In my opinion, you're not gonna find a large minivan that is kind of a people carrier, a family, uh, the ultimate family car that gets this kind of gas mileage in the market today and be this reliable. Reliability has significantly improved since 2021, Probably 2021 early ones had the most issues. The later ones, they're much, much better. However, the major problem remains. Can you even get one? This is a message to Toyota. You made such a good van. While it's not perfect, the build and fit finish is not 100%, but it is not the end of the world. But the message to Toyota is, could you please make more so people actually can buy one? And dealerships don't have to wreak havoc on buyers, raising the prices of the new ones, raising the prices of the used ones, to a point where it absolutely makes no sense. And that's what Toyota needs to work on to improve this Sienna, because otherwise, this is a really good minivan. Now, if you're gonna use this as a cargo van, this is not a potentially a good van for you. If you're gonna always have full passengers with their luggage going in a mountainous area all the time, this is probably going to wear you out because while the power is sufficient, like we talked about, it is not as powerful as the previous V6. And that's possibly the compromise. To get that good gas mileage, they had to go hybrid. And I think you're not really going to always be driving with full passengers, full luggage all the time in a mountainous area. So there is that, folks. This is a really good minivan, if you can get one. Hope they fix that problem. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.